ABC has announced the return of TGIF. More about that when we come back. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Alright, so yesterday it was announced that ABC is going to be bringing back TGIF. Uh, I have the website up here. Uh, so far it looks like the lineup is going to be Fresh Off the Boat, Speechless, and Child Support. Let's see, it... So far, only two sitcoms, and looks like only one of them is really family-friendly. Uh, how I feel about this is that this isn't TGIF. Uh, this should be called something else. This is more like a Tuesday or Wednesday night, Tuesday or Wednesday night lineup for ABC uh, that they just kind of moved over to Friday nights and called it TGIF. Uh, growing up. TGIF was the biggest thing on TV for Friday nights. You had Family Matters. You had Full House. You had Boy Meets World. You had Spring of the Teenage Witch. You had Step by Step. You had Hanging with Mr. Cooper. You had Perfect Strangers. The list goes on and on. You had Dinosaurs. Good, wholesome, family-friendly entertainment. I'm not sure what this is, but it's not TGIF. If... ABC really wanted to bring TGIF back and make it as good as it once was and keep with their formula, their successful formula, formula that was successful for well over a decade, uh, almost a decade and a half. It started in the late 80s and it went on up until the early 2000s and it really fell off the map once ABC chose not to renew Family Matters. And then CBS picked it up for one season. It, it really... Doing that really hurt TGIF. It was never the same after that. Uh, and one of the big things with TGIF was their shows were interlinked. Uh, they were a shared universe. We talk a lot about shared universes on uh, comic book channels nowadays with the Marvel Cinematic Universe... Uh, the DCEU, but this is pretty much where it got started. Uh, other than soap operas, you know, those were shared universes, I guess you could say. But this is really where it got started. You would have a lot of crossovers. There were times when Steve Urkel from Family Matters would show up on Full House or Step by Step. He was mentioned at least once in Boy Meets World. Michelle Tanner and her friends showed up on Hanging with Mr. Cooper, uh, and in the pilot episode, Alan Thicke from uh, Growing Pains showed up on the pilot episode of Hanging with Mr. Cooper. In fact, the pilot episode was shot in the Growing Pains house. Uh, after that, they got their own set and everything. Um, but that's the way it was. It was a shared television universe. Uh, I'm not sure what they're going to do with this, but I don't think it's going to be a shared television universe. And that was a big thing back in the day. You never knew week to week what of your favorite characters from another show were going to show up on the show you're watching. And as I said, it was good, wholesome family entertainment. Uh, Family-friendly entertainment. And shows like Family Matters, Full House. Um, Full House we, may, we can make fun of today because of the constant hugging and the awe moments and all that. But it, it was. It, it was good. It was right for the time. It was good, wholesome, family-friendly entertainment. I can't say that enough. That's what TGIF revolved around. Because their parent company was Disney. It still is Disney. Um, so if ABC wanted to do TGIF right and bring it back and be as popular as it was back in the 90s, I suggest they reintroduce Girl Meets World. Uh, Girl Meets World was on the Disney Channel for uh, four or five years. I think it was about four years. Uh, but it didn't really have as much success as it should have, simply because Disney didn't keep with a set schedule for it. It was all over the place. You never knew when you were going to get a new episode. They would film like, they would air three new episodes or maybe one new episode, and then you'd have a couple weeks off. They weren't stable with it. 
so that that's what hurt Girl Meets World. Uh, it, it was a very popular show, though. A lot of fans didn't really like the idea that it was being canceled. I think Disney should reboot Girl Meets World with the same cast and everything, just maybe a year or two later uh, from where it left off, and bring it over to ABC and have that start out the TGIF family-friendly lineup. Next, they should reboot Family Matters. The cast and the fans have been all for a Family Matters reboot or reunion show. The only reason it went off the air was because Joe Marie Payton, who played Harriet Winslow, uh, which the show was built around. It was actually a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. Uh, they decide, she, Her character was so popular on Perfect Strangers, they decided to give her her own show, and it focused around her family. But in the ninth no, uh, midway through the 10th season, they chose not to renew her contract or there was a contract dispute or whatever. And they brought in Judy and Elder to replace her. She was okay, but she was no Harriet Winslow. Uh, they really cut back on her lines and her scenes, uh, because of that. And the, there wasn't that same chemistry with, uh, between, uh, her and the rest of the cast. Uh, so that's why it ended when it did. Now, Reginald Val Johnson, Joe Marie Payton, uh, Darius McCreary, Brighton, uh, excuse me, I'm reading all the names, I've forgotten the names, you know, uh, Brighton Eric McClure, Sean Harrison, Jalel White, uh, and Tilma Hopkins, uh, they're all, uh, as well as uh, Kelly Shanine Williams Jackson, who played Laura, they're all on board for a reboot. Uh, so bring back Family Matters. As we know, Family Matters ended. Uh, Laura and Steve uh, were engaged and planning get, to get married. Uh, Steve went into outer space and then he came back. Special effects for that episode weren't that great. But it was a good ending. Uh, we all knew that Steve and Laura were going to end up getting together in the end. Focus on that. Bring back Family Matters. And then... I would go so far as to bring Fuller House over from Netflix and have it as part of TGIF as well. Since Full House was one of the original shows on TGIF, bring it over and put it on the new TGIF lineup. So you'd have Girl Meets World. You'd have uh, Fuller House, which agreed it's not as good as the original, but it's still pretty good. And it's family-friendly entertainment. Uh, Family Matters reboot. And then Melissa Joan Hart has been off given a new series on Netflix. Uh, Netflix has ordered a multi-camera comedy series starring Melissa Joan Hart and Sean Astin. Um, <clears throat> let, me, let me just read this to you guys real quick. Uh, I brought it up here uh, from Deadline.com. A couple of years ago, Netflix entered the family sitcom arena with Fuller House, a sequel to TGIF's Full House. For its follow-up effort in the space, the internet network has picked up another family sitcom with TGIF pedigree. Netflix has given a 20-episode order to No Good Nick, a multi-camera comedy headlined by Melissa Joan Hart, star of the TGIF comedy Sabrina the TGH Witch, and Sean Astin, who you guys may know as Rudy and one of the main characters from Goonies. Uh, also the adopted son of the original Gomez Adams on The Adams Family. And Sean Astin in his return to Netflix after his memorable co-starring turn on the second season of Stranger Things. Created by David H. Steinberg and Kiki Kogan, No Good Nick also stars Sienna Agadong in the title role as well as Kal Kalama Epstein and Laura Lindsay Donzis. Hart and Aston play Liz and Ed, a hyper-competitive career mom and lovable but dorky fun dad, respectively, who unwitting, unwittingly welcome 13-year-old Nick, short for Nicole, into their family of four before realizing she is a street-smart con artist with a secret agenda. The multi-cam sitcom, which has started production, has an added element of serialized drama as there might be more beneath the surface of Nick than meets the eye. The series is directed by Andy Fickman and produced by Netflix. It is the second multi-camera comedy series produced by Netflix, joining The Ranch. 
So, and it goes on after that. I'm not going to read everything to you. But Melissa Joan Hart is perfect for family friendly sitcoms. Uh, getting her start on Clarissa Explains It All on Nickelodeon. Uh, going on to Sabrina the Teenage Witch and voicing Sabrina on the animated series. And then with her stint on Melissa and Joey, uh, which was a very underrated sitcom. I really enjoyed Melissa and Joey. So if they were to take this and bring it over to ABC, put it on TGIF alongside Girl Meets World, alongside a Family Matters reboot, alongside Fuller House, you would have the TGIF we all grew up and fell in love with in the 90s. As of right now, doesn't look to be the case. I doubt Netflix will want to turn over their series to ABC. They might, given how much money ABC and Disney have. Now, I'm not sure what child support is. And I've honestly never seen Fresh Off the Boat. Actually, I take that back. I've seen one episode. Uh, and it really wasn't all that great. There was nothing really special about it. Uh, in my opinion, anyway. Speechless seems like it would be more of an adult-oriented sitcom. Uh, similar to Roseanne. With, with more adult humor than kid-friendly humor. And Child Support seems kind of like a, a talk show. Stars Ricky Gervais and Fred Savage. Uh, Fred Savage has TGIF cred. Uh, he was on an episode of Boy Meets World. His brother starred in Boy Meets World, Ben Savage. Uh, and they starred together on uh, Little Monsters together. And a few other shows. But Ricky Gervais isn't really known for his family-friendly humor. Which the same could be said for Bob Saget. But Bob Saget really owned his role as Danny Tanner. He wasn't a super popular comedian, at least not a super well-known comedian, before his time on Full House. Uh, and Full House is what really brought him into the limelight, made him popular. Uh, and then his turn on America's Funniest Home Videos, which kind of continued the family-friendly humor aspect. But yeah, that's my thoughts. It was also announced this week what happened to Roseanne for the debut of the spinoff, The Connors. Uh, it turns out she's going to die from, she died from a overdose, a prescription medication overdose, uh, which I don't really agree with. The last episode of last season, of the final season of Roseanne, uh, they were talking about her getting surgery for her back. And yeah, she had a, problem with taking too many pain meds but I don't think they should have used that as a way to kill off the character I really think they should have gone the route where there were complications during her back surgery uh, and maybe she died in, in surgery you know something like that uh, something that would make more sense uh, the idea that Roseanne who a lot of many of us grew up with uh, that she died from a drug overdose doesn't really make sense. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle that, uh, if they're going to do it justice or brush it off. But I wouldn't rule out that this is the last we see of the Roseanne TV series. Depending on how the Connors does without Roseanne, uh, we could see a return of Roseanne. Uh, the same way we see saw a return of Dan Connor, uh, John Goodman's character, where the death was part of the story that she was telling in the uh, final episode of, Ro of previous season of Roseanne uh, over a decade ago. So that's my thoughts on ABC's The Connors and ABC's new TGIF lineup. So something I forgot to mention is that this year's Halloween episode of the Goldbergs was announced yesterday. There's going to be a special guest as well that we are all just excited for. It's going to be the return of the one true Freddy Krueger. Robert England is reprising his role as the nightmarish madman from Nightmare on Elm Street in this year's 
Halloween episode of The Goldbergs on ABC. I can't tell you how excited I am for it. Uh, the title of the show is going to be A Nightmare on Elk Avenue. Uh, of course, The Goldbergs is set in the 80s, which was the uh, when Nightmare on Elm Street was popularized uh, and, and uh, created. So it's going to be really interesting to see if Robert England still has it. It's going to be his first real appearance as Freddy in 15 years, uh, somewhere around there. Uh, I think it's been about 15 years since Freddy vs. Jason. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys are too. As I've said before, this is Comageddon TV, the only place where all geek culture collides on YouTube. Uh, we don't just revolve around comic books and movies. We dive into TV series and books, toys, anything geek culture related. And TGIF has a huge geek culture following. So I thought it only right that we discuss it on today's episode. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, you can check out one of these two playlists right here on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched.